Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a review and tutorial on the new Urban Decay Naked Wild West palette. But I'm gonna change things up. Normally I start off with the review, show you swatches, then do the tutorial. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. And then if you stay tuned to the end, I will give you my thoughts on the palette, show you swatches, all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. I have already applied the Milani eyeshadow primer to my lid. Now I'm gonna use the Sigma E50 and start off with this nice matte cream shade called Standoff and put this just right under the brow like I usually do. For today's look, I am really in the mood to do something warm. And so I'm gonna stick with mostly the warm tones in this palette. I've seen a lot of different looks with this palette. A lot of them dive right into those colorful shades. We might use the, a little bit of this one. So the next shade I'm gonna go in with is this one right here, which is called Nudie. I'm using the BK Beauty 201. And I'm just gonna make sure I tap off my brush and going to just put this right above the crease and then into the crease. So just blending that right into that brow bone highlight shade. And then staying with that same brush, I'm now going to go into the shade Ghost Town and going to again tap off my brush and just go a little bit lower. I am primarily starting in the outer corner, so most of that shadow is being deposited right there in the outer corner and then just blending it inward by using the same brush it has a little bit of that other color on there so that's helping it to blend a little easier next I'm going to change my brush and stay with that same shade this is a BK Beauty 206 more of ghost town and now I'm just going to really Get this right in the corner and bring it down to the lash line. Just intensify that color a little bit more. Going down now to an even smaller brush. This is the 204 from BK Beauty. I'm going to now go into the shade right next to that, which is called Whiskey. And they used to have, Urban Decay used to have I think they still do have an eyeliner pencil in the shade Whiskey, and it is a nice kind of dark brown. I think I probably used one or two of those pencils throughout the years. I really liked that shade a lot, and it translates well into an eyeshadow color. I'll go back with the 206 and no extra product. Just blend those two colors together. And you can see these are really blending very easily into one another. So that's something to take note of, right? Okay, so now on the lid, I'm gonna do a combination of the gold and silver in this palette. You'll see soon in the swatches uh, what those look like on their own. But I'm gonna start off with just a finger. I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna go into the gold shade first and it's called Hold'em. And just going to place this on kind of the inner half of the lid. I'm not going quite all the way to the inner corner, but close. And this does have quite a lot of actual sparkle in it. It's not just a smooth kind of pearl. There is actual glitter particles in both of these shades. I'm gonna clean off my finger really well and go in now with the one next to it, which is called Cowboy Rick. And this is, in my opinion, the most unique shade in the palette. It has a little bit of kind of some pink tones to it. It's a very, very interesting color. I'm going to now layer that over the gold. All right, then what I did over here is I'm going in now with a wet brush. I am loading up one side of my brush with the gold and then the other side with the silver. So one with Hold'em, one with Cowboy Rick, and then I'm gonna spritz my brush with MAC Fix Plus, and I'm just going to 
kind of go back and forth. Use I'm using for starting off first with the silver side of the brush, then flipping it over and tapping. And you can just see how it transforms that shade and really kind of brings out the multiple tones of mostly that cowboy rick shade, but with that little bit of gold, I just think it adds a really nice little bit of interest. It smooths everything out. You still have that metallic quality when the light hits it, but it's not quite so chunky looking and you're not gonna get that glitter falling out. While that finish is drying, we're gonna go to the lower lash line and I'm first using a little bit of the Mainline Urban Decay 24 seven pencil. And this is a very similar color to one of the eyeshadows in the palette. So I'm just going to use this as a base down here. And I just really love teal paired with these terracotta colors and warm browns. I just think it's a really nice combination. And you're gonna see that by adding this below my eye, it's gonna bring out my eye color as well. So now let's take the Morphe M432 and a little bit of this shade right here, which is called Tex, and it's going to go right over the top of that liner there. And again, that liner just helps kind of grab the shadow so it lasts longer. You can go without the pencil down here, but your shadow might fade a little bit through the day. And then just below that, I'm gonna add a little bit of Ghost Town, just to bring a little warmth down here. All right, on the upper lash line, I think I'll finish out with the Urban Decay 24 seven pencil in Demolition. I was watching somebody who said that this is the color of the pencil they had on display in the store. I don't know if it was in Sephora or Ulta, but this is one of the colors. This has been in Urban Decay's collection for quite a long time, but it's one of my favorites. It's a nice dark black brown and it is a matte finish. So just putting this on the outer corner and definitely making sure to work this into my lash line as well. And then right here, I'm going to work just a little bit into the roots of the lashes. And then I'll go back with the BK Beauty 204 and we're gonna top that liner with a little bit of whiskey just to help kind of soften the edge of that a little bit. All right, so I've added mascara, which I will leave my combination in the description box down below. Also added a little bit of contour. And now it's time for some blush. So I have really been enjoying this shade of the Patrick Ta blush. Um, this is called She's So LA. And if you're not familiar with this, you're supposed to apply the powder part of the blush and then top it with the cream blush. And that seems really strange and a little scary, but it actually works. So I'm gonna start off with the E4 Morphe using the powder side of the blush. And this is such a pretty blush. Very neutral, but there's a hint more pink in it than I thought there would be in just looking at it in the pan. Now that's how it comes off on my skin. Um, if you have pink tones in your skin, it might end up being a little bit warmer on you, but I have really enjoyed this blush. Very neutral overall, but so pretty. Oh my goodness. And I think this is going to go well into the summer. These bronzy gold looks, right? And then I'll take the Luxie 522 brush and a little bit of the cream part. And I think the cream part just adds a little, well, obviously a little more color, but it gives a little glow to the cheeks. There's no shimmer in it, but I think it just makes the cheeks look a little healthier, 
just a kind of glowing from within kind of <laughs> look. So I don't know. I've really enjoyed this combination though. For highlighter, I'm going back to a new one that you've seen recently, and this is from Jacqueline. This is the shade Iced. I hope that her shades get restocked soon, but I've really enjoyed this, but if you saw me apply this before, you know it just takes a tiny little bit. Um, this one is the little, little more for fairer skin, I think. Um, it has a little bit of kind of some cool white. It's kind of like a white champagne color. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that on my finger and use that on my inner corner just because I don't quite want the chunkiness of those eyeshadows in the inner corner of my eye, even though I could wet my brush again. I don't get quite the brightness that I want here, so I'll just use this. Next, we'll go around the lips with the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. In Soft Ochre is the color I use. And then my lip combination today, I wanna to try this, we'll see how it works, but I recently purchased a couple of new lip products from MAC. They were having a sale, so I got the famous lip liner in Strip Down. And Strip Down is a lot warmer color than I thought it would be, but I personally don't mind that. I think it's a nice nude color. And then for my lipstick, you're gonna just die when you first see the color. This is called CB96. And I don't know what got into me, but this color just was so appealing to me when I saw it online. It is a really pretty, kind of a muted orange with gold pearl. Let's try it here. I say muted and it goes on bright orange. Uh, but I think there's there's a a bit of a pink coral nature to this color. I don't know. I just I think it's gonna be a fun color for the summer. And I think mixing it with that lip liner just tones it down and kind of ties in our crease color, I think, a little better. All right, and then after fixing my hair, I decided I need to add just a little bit of gloss, and I forgot I have a fresh tube of one of my favorite lip glosses. This is Dose of Color in the shade Jazzy, and it is such a wonderful, sparkly shade. I just love it, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that on top. All right, so here's our finished look. And overall, I do love how this look came together. I love that little added pop of color on the lower lash line. Just by adding that deep matte teal, it makes this kind of otherwise warm neutral eye just adds a little bit of interest there. And the looks that I have gotten with this palette, I have actually really enjoyed. I've done a cool tone look with just this gray and that cowboy Rick and just a little bit of this in the crease. So I feel like you can get warm and cool looks. You can also get some colorful looks. Now at first when I saw this palette and the color scheme, I thought, oh no, nope, nope, nope. But then when I took out just these two kind of colorful shades and really just that one, I thought, okay, I think there's potential there. And I've been surprised at how much I've actually enjoyed this. Now, if you're looking at these colors though, and you are not a warm tone shadow person, then you're gonna be missing more than half of this palette. So there are some interesting shades here that we've not seen before in a naked palette. You know, mostly these ones. Um, and then I do like that they added this gray. I do, however, wish it were just a little bit deeper because I do find that 
this isn't quite as much depth as I sometimes want for an eye. So I do wish it was a little bit, there were a, there was a little more black in it just to add a little more depth to some looks. But overall, I do like the palette. These two shimmer shades are quite flaky. And at first I thought, oh no, these are not going to work at all. And I was really disappointed in the swatches. I will put up on the screen some swatches. This palette did not swatch well at all. I swatched on bare skin though. And so when I applied it on my eyes over a primer, I felt like the shadows performed actually quite well. And they held up through the day. And I felt like my looks that I've created so far, they did not tend to get muddy, which can happen if the shadows are not very pigmented. And so all of that combined, I do feel like overall this palette performs well. It does come with a dual ended brush and it is a very usable brush. I've used it maybe once or twice. Um, the top brush is a little more pinched, I think, than in some of the other brushes, but I do like this little end right here. It's really nice for kind of packing on some shadow in the outer corner. But overall, the packaging is very much the same as their previous naked palettes. It's that hard plastic, magnetic closure, full mirror. Now this one, if you're not into snakes, now I'm not into snakes, but I've gotten to the point where I can handle looking at snake skin. Now this one has snake skin like holographic underneath. So it's really cool in certain ways, but if you can't stand the sight of snakes, you won't like to look at this palette on your vanity. So I just be aware of that. But I, overall, I think the theme of the palette, Wild West, I think that was appropriately named. I think it goes well with the color scheme. So, you know, it's a good palette. I think it just comes down to whether this is a color scheme that you say, yes, this is my jam. I love those two pops of teal. That's what I've been looking for in a palette, then go for it. Otherwise, I don't really feel like the rest of the shades are really that unique. Um, Cowboy Rick might be the exception there, but again, to buy a whole palette for one or two shades, probably not a wise financial decision. So it is a good palette. I do enjoy it. I will continue to get use out of it but it's not my favorite of all of the naked palettes, but I am finding that I'm enjoying it much more than I thought I would. So I hope this video is helpful to you, whether you are considering purchasing it or you've already purchased it and you just needed some inspiration for a new look. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.